This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. All right, guys, I've got to come clean a little bit with you guys. I've been doing snake bites for over nine years, and I'm starting to run out of ideas of what to film here at BHB. I haven't traveled in a while, and the shops kind of got me feeling like James Stewart in the movie Vertigo. Now before you guys go Googling who is James Stewart, go ahead and comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see in future episodes of Snake Bites. And this week, we're gonna be doing something a little different. My name is Brian Barczyk. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, we're gonna be doing something a little different. Bear with me, this is gonna be fun, guys. It's kind of a pilot of sorts. I've been thinking about doing a series about news stories for animals with some reactions and some commentary. So this is kind of like a pilot episode, but when we actually do the series, we're gonna bring in other people like Jason from Five Weird Animal Facts. And don't worry, guys, next week, you'll get the normal snake bites back. Damn, Florida, back at it again with your insanity. Florida authorities have arrested a man for throwing a live alligator through a Wendy's drive-through. 24-year-old Joshua James, who by the way was named after a serial killer, drove up to his nearest drive-through at about 1.30 a.m. on October 11th and throws a three and a half foot alligator through the window. Why? Because Florida, that's why. I should also mention that Joshua James is from Jupiter, Florida, which couldn't be more appropriate because this dude is from another planet. Look at that gaze. In conclusion, James has now been banned from all Wendy's and the alligator is now safe. He's also picked up a job as an assistant manager at said Wendy's. I'm kidding, of course. Alligators can't run restaurants, even in Florida. Our next story will brighten your day as scientists have discovered the first biofluorescent sea turtle in the Solomon Islands. David Gruber, a marine biologist that was on a night dive looking to film some small biofluorescent sharks and coral reefs, found something that was even better. The critically endangered Hawksbill sea turtle has certainly blown people away. Gruber speculates that the turtle is using its biofluorescence for camouflage rather than for the typical use of drawing in prey. The hawksbill species is one of the rarest on the planet and its population has declined over 90% in the last 20 years. Our next story has been making the rounds recently and it involves a croc mauling a keeper at a local sanctuary in Townsville. Fortunately, the handler is expected to make a full recovery Renee Robertson was bitten in the arm by an eight foot crocodile named Tipper. The owner of the sanctuary, Bob Fleming, has stated that the croc will not be euthanized, which is great news to me. I personally believe that the fault usually lies when an animal is being mishandled. I mean no disrespect to the victim by any means. All I'm saying is that situations like this usually occur due to some lack of precaution or human error. But I'm glad that the people and the croc are okay. You ever have that stubborn friend that you're trying to set up on a date, but they're just too stubborn? Well, imagine that, but for 12 years. A tuatera, a rare lizard-like reptile, has taken 38 years to lay eggs. Staff at the Chester Zoo have been trying to get a female tuatera named Mustard to breed for literally decades. That's a pretty damp sex life. Finally, after 12 years, she met a male named Pixie, and love was in the air. These reptiles have a reputation for being insanely hard to breed, which leads me to my next story. Tuateras have no penises. Instead, as an embryo, it forms tiny nubbins that turn into sperm delivery organs. The closest relatives, snakes and lizards, have nubbins that grow into insertable organs. The big question here is whether or not the tuatera had a hung ancestral organ or if its cousins gained a pair. Moving on from having no organ to having too many. A black and white tegu has regenerated six tails due to a severe injury after a sharp object cut the tail, but it wasn't completely severed, causing the tail to regenerate multiple tips. I bet you the tuateras are jealous. This set a world's record. No lizard has ever regenerated this many tails. This next story also comes from Townsville. I think if this show teaches you anything, it's to not move to Townsville. Need more proof? 
Look at this picture. A nine foot python inside a toilet bowl by a snake catcher, Elliot Budd, who states that it's one of his biggest he's ever relocated. Once trying to grab the snake, the python bolted down the pipeline. Budd had to ask one of the tradesmen who was working on the house to unbolt the toilet. They eventually got enough leverage to get the snake out. This wasn't an isolated incident either, as a few days prior, a seven and a half foot snake was pulled out of another toilet bowl. So there it is guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of pilot show. We'll have this series over the next couple months. If you have any ideas, comment down below. We'd love to hear about it. And don't worry, Snake Bites will be back next week. I love doing that show. And speaking of shows, you guys gotta tune in to Discovery Channel tonight at 10 Eastern time for Venom Hunters. Keep promoting that show guys, I really appreciate it. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through everything. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV and on Instagram at snakebites.tv. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Kind of. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes every Thursday, only on Animal Bites TV.